I haven't seen the Panamanian golden frog in Panama in the wild since 2009. In Panama now we're breeding, we have facilities um, to breed golden frogs and other, and other species of frogs. Here in Baltimore is the biggest population of golden frog in the world. The reason I'm here is to see how Kevin and his staff are running the program because obviously they've had the most success and I'm here to pick up knowledge. It's also inspirational to see so many golden frogs. So the golden frog has many legends attached to it in Panamanian culture. There's this perception of good luck and we don't have them left in the wild so we, our luck is changing. We need to change the story so they can be good luck again and, and I think that we'll be able to do that. Without these kind of facilities without these kind of rooms, these animals would not be on the planet. So I mean the value of that, save an animal from extinction, can't put money value to it. People always ask me, you know, oh it's another species, species go extinct. Everyone needs to make their own choice, but I feel that the world is a much better place with them in it. The AZA and zoos and aquariums all over the United States to have conservation programs is just really benefiting the whole world because it's a place for people to share their knowledge and to grow and to and to save to save species. You know, I think it, I think it's really it's important for zoos to do this because of their knowledge that they have about animals. For the golden frog in general, imagine if we lose it, Panama's lost its luck. So my dedication is to not let the forest go silent, to have their voices not be extinguished and to be able to put them back in the wild.